It's nice to see this chapel filled with people <laughs> and uh, the pews back there with our clergy and uh, the bishops of the diocese present. It makes us the fullness of the church. This spot is a spot of prayer, a spot of peace, a true gem among many within the Diocese of Greensburg. We're gathering, as I said, on the patronal feast of our diocese, which is placed under the protection of Our Lady of the Assumption. We're gathering in the chapel named after Joseph, her most chaste spouse. We're next to our diocesan heritage center, right down the hall, which is dedicating its space to honor the 100th anniversary of Mary's appearance at Fatima. I hope you are able to take the time tonight to visit that display. Well done. And we are gathering because Jesus looked at his disciple from the cross. And when he did that, he looked at every disciple who would ever be his follower. And he said to us, looking at Mary, Behold your mother. Behold your mother. Mary, who was conceived without sin, remained sinless until the day when her life on earth was completed. And because of her fidelity, we believe, she was the first of God's creation to be glorified body and soul in heaven. A preview of what is to come for all of us when on the day of the last judgment our bodies will rise again to be reunited, glorified with our souls because we believe in the resurrection of the body. Mary was the fulfillment then of God's plan for us from the beginning. The disobedience of Adam and Eve might have disturbed God's plan, but they could not defeat it. God's plan will never be defeated. The knot they tied with sin and death was untied when Mary said yes to God. Thus, Jesus was conceived who forgave our sins, destroyed death, and opened the gates of paradise once again for us. Adam and Eve were banished. We've been welcomed back home. Mary was the first, but not the last, to go through those gates. St. John Paul II said that in her, assumed into heaven, we are shown the eternal destiny that awaits us beyond the mystery of death a destiny of total happiness and glory. She has preceded us, but she encourages us to come with her. Let us go with Mary to the throne of Jesus. It was the love that Jesus had for Mary that pulled her upward, assumed her into heaven, and it is the love of Christ for us that pulls us toward him. Keeping our gaze fixed on heavenly realities, heavenly realities, we keep focused on the prize of our salvation. We must have the mind to become saints because that's the call that Jesus gives to us. And that is why Mary said so brilliantly at the wedding feast of Cana, do whatever he tells you. Whatever he tells you. And he's speaking to our hearts even now. In so many individual ways as he, he tries to bring his salvation to the world and all the people in it. Do what I'm telling you. Help me proclaim my gospel. Go and teach all nations. We are pilgrims on the way. And tonight's procession should be a simple reminder that we are not standing still. We are going somewhere. We have purpose. 
We have a reason for being made in the image of God. Sometimes I think today's society forgets that God made us for a reason. Together with Mary, we form a communion of saints. Just think of the communion that's here, and then imagine it worldwide, and then imagine all those believers who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith. That huge communion of saints, some of us still moving from the back of the line, and I am furthest back than anyone, I'm convinced. But others at the front, able to see the beatific vision and passing it down person to person to person to person. There's something worth living for. God is calling us to greatness. In today's gospel, Mary is the mother who brings Jesus to Elizabeth. The unborn Jesus comes to Elizabeth. She also brings him to us because she has a great love for us. Mary brings Jesus to us because she loves us. Love is what binds us together as Christians. The love that God has for us, our love for God, and our love for one another. It binds us together. That is why anything that wants to tear love apart from us is a source of great pain for Mary, who wants to bring us love. Just as it is for Jesus when we sin, which is always an act against love. Mary does continue to stand at the foot of the cross. She, she sees her son suffering when she sees us suffering. You know, death doesn't separate us from one another. And Mary is extremely close to us. The shadow of the cross covers us in so many ways. We do see it in the raging drug epidemic. There's the shadow of the cross there, and it's a dark shadow, a painful shadow. We saw it last weekend in Charlottesville. Extremely dark shadow of the cross. We see it, the cross, in war and poverty. Those sticky and perennial problems. We see it when people who need help are turned away and said, no room for you at the inn. Even though assumed into heaven, Mary is not far from our places of pain. Why? Because she is where her son is, and her son is to be found there. He says it so well in the gospel. Mary is a partner in his struggle against sin. Still, Mary brings to her ministry of compassion in the words of the Magnificat where she says, God has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. May we always stand in awe of Almighty God and in humility say yes to whatever God wants of us. May we bow humbly before God's will, always do what is right and just, and be agents of love instead of instruments of hate. Pope Francis, reflecting on the assumption earlier today, <clears throat> thank God for Google. Pope Francis said this, carrying Jesus, carrying Jesus, Mary brings us a new ability to pass with faith through the most painful and difficult moments. She brings us the capacity for mercy forgiveness, understanding, and supporting one another. To support one another as the Church of Greensburg is part of God's will. To support each one of us. To support each other in the Diocese of Greensburg, in our local parishes, in our ministries, in our apostolates, whether bishop, priest, layperson, or young child, is why Mary brings Jesus to us and gives us the capacity to love. The dragon, or Satan, in the book of Revelation, 
has not been able to destroy her ability to love. Quite the opposite. In fact, she has crushed the head of the serpent with her immaculate foot. This young virgin, this gentle woman, this immaculately conceived lady crushed the devil with her foot. Father Steve Rossetti writes in his book, Behold Your Mother, that he once encountered a priest who was suddenly spiritually attacked by evil forces late one night. He described them as demonic. He knew that he was not a match for such unbelievable power. He knew that he needed help. And so the priest told Father Rossetti that he barely made it to the other side of the room where his rosary beads lay. The moment he grasped the beads, the demonic force left. And he said that since that time, his rosary beads are never far from his side. When I was a parish priest, one of the things I would always recommend to the, the young people of the parish was to make sure they had a rosary in their pocket. It reminds us that we're destined for holy things and that the saints, especially Mary, is with us on our journey. Have a rosary in your pocket. I always feel kind of, I hate to say this because this is on WAOB radio, but naked when I don't, when I forget, and I, I go to work, and I say, oh my gosh, my rosary's not in my pocket. Because I need to have it there. It's been such a comfort to me. It has been such a comfort to me. The one I have in my pocket today was given to me by a young man who made it, and later told me he was entering the seminary, and he's finished his first year at St. Charles in Philadelphia. I should have asked him if he wanted to transfer to Greensburg, but then the Bishop of Harrisburg would be very upset with me. <laughs> this year, we remember the 100th anniversary of Mary's appearance in Fatima, where she called for a conversion of heart and for constant prayer. Specifically, she called for praying the daily rosary. Even from above, Mary says, pray with me to bring peace to the world. Perhaps the children of Fatima would have asked the same question that Elizabeth asked Mary in tonight's gospel. And how does this happen to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? How does it happen that the mother of our Lord should come to us? She comes to us to bring Jesus. She comes to us to bring love. She comes to us to bring salvation. We have a good mother. At the end of his homily in 1997, St. John Paul II closed with the words that I would like to end with tonight. He said, Mary, clothed with the sun, help us to fix our gaze on Christ amid the inevitable suffering and problems of everyday life. Help us not to be afraid of following him to the very end even when the cross seems unbearably heavy. Make us understand that this alone is the way which leads to the heights of eternal salvation. And from heaven, where you shine forth as queen and mother of mercy, watch over each one of your children. Guide them to love, adore, and serve Jesus the blessed fruit of your womb, O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Amen.